Hi everybody, lovely to see you tonight. Thanks for joining us for The Lord is on my side. Um, and it's lovely to have Lou with us this evening. Hi Lou. Hello. Um, Lou is standing in her half done, no, maybe more than half done, new kitchen. Um, yeah. She's just given me a little tour, but we're not going to put you all through that. But it looks amazing. It's getting nearly there. Um, and the thing that makes me laugh the most about her new kitchen is the name of the colour. So you see that beautiful green colour behind Lou? That's called Pastoral Peace. So um, <laughs> Lou chose it for the name as much as the colour, I believe. Is that a true fact, Lou? Yeah, I just thought it was ironic. <laughs> Um, so I've persuaded Lou to come and talk to us tonight about her experiences over the last year. Lou's a nurse and um, has been working on COVID wards on and off over the last year. So Lou, thanks so much for actually processing this yourself and being prepared to talk to us about it. I really appreciate it. Um, do you want to just start us off by setting the scene for what's been going on um, over the last year? Yeah, so when the pandemic first happened we kind of we knew things were hot enough at work because we were getting a lot more patients coming through um and i was relatively newly qualified i'd been um a nurse for about two years um even though i'd worked for the nhs a lot longer i'd actually been qualified for only two years and i worked on um a day surgery unit in, um taking patients to for surgery and their recovery afterwards so it was a pretty short stay um, Monday to Friday, it suited me with the family. Um, then they declared a pandemic, sent us on a two day training course for critical care. And a month later said, right, we're sending you into critical care, high dependency unit, looking after COVID patients, off you go. <laughs> Man, that's intense, isn't it? Yeah. It, it, it was, um, felt very much out of my comfort zone because it was, it was all a new thing. Nobody actually understood um, what COVID was, um, what the risks were um, to us at work or what we were taking home, really. Nobody actually understood um, the correct PPE we needed to wear. Um, and then when you get sent to a unit that you're not used to working on, um, you're not trained in some of the things and a PowerPoint presentation did not equip me with the knowledge and skills to look after a fully ventilated patient, but that's what I was given. So it was very much learning on the task. Yeah. So that was hard, like in work with all the sort of having to learn so fast, all these new skills. Yeah. Um, how did that impact things at home, Lou? Um, I think one of the hardest things was the impact on the kids. So they knew things were serious because schools were very different. So um, people were started to shield. Um, it was key worker kids that they were then known as. They weren't known as Hannah and Abigail in class, whatever. It was you're a key worker kid, which yeah. I think they found quite difficult because they were put in their own little bubble as it, as it were. Um, but then when I came home from a 14 hour shift wearing PPE and you've literally got the marks on your face from PPE and within 24 hours you've got bruises in the shape of a mask on your face i think the kids then were just very aware of what i was doing that wasn't my normal job and they knew that um so abigail especially found it very difficult and developed crippling anxiety where she didn't sleep she didn't eat um so i could do a 14 hour shift come home from work and then sit up with her for most of the night. And she'd go to school, I'd go to work on like two hours sleep. So I think that was probably the hardest thing. Yeah, it's hard to see your children battling through it, isn't it? And suffering Yeah. and not being able to take that away. Yeah, I think that, that was one of the hardest things. I mean, I, I had, was very aware that I needed to come home from work and not show how rough my day had been in front of the children. I, I didn't have that luxury of being able to discuss it with Graham because little ears are everywhere. So it was, right, next task. <laughs> yeah. But they're perceptive, aren't they? So I guess she'd picked up that things weren't normal, hadn't she? And things were difficult. Yeah. 
I think she just, she knew how different things work as it was. I couldn't come in and hug the children straight away because I had to have, I'd had a shower before I left work. But the first thing you want to do is shower when you get in because you just want to get work off you. And I wore a different uniform, which she was fully aware of. I had to wash my shoes. I had to wash my clothes differently. So it wasn't a case of come home, hug the kids and sit down with them for a bit. I had to come in, wash and then see the kids. And I think they found that very difficult. It, I was it had to kind of distance a little bit because we were so unaware of the risk. Yeah. Okay, so that's a lot of hard things in quite a short space of time. Um, was there a scripture or scriptures, Lou, that helped you in that time? Yeah, I think I it, things that I just had to keep if. It, because we were so locked away, it was a case of you've got to read to keep saying. So, and I was I was lucky to have the Bible on my phone. So if we had a break at work, you could read. Um, and two verses I just keep reminding myself of was um, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Um, Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Um, just reminding us that there is a promise to... <laughs> The things that you're going through, there's still a promise, even if we've got no no understanding of what we're going through at the time. Yeah, and I guess trust that verse calls us to trust, doesn't it? That God knows yeah. and that's what faith's about. But that's so hard, isn't it? When we'd like to know the answers ourselves, don't we? Yeah. The other one that um just for jumpy, I'll I'll, I'll get tattooed somewhere at some point. Um was <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah 40 verse 28 to 31 um, have you not heard do you not know the Lord the, um, the Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth he will not grow tired or weary and he, his understanding knows, no one can fathom he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall but those whose hope is in the Lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. And I think that was just, it was very poignant in the weariness, exhaustion and fear that you're not, you're not doing it on your own. You're not doing it on your own strength. And when nobody else understands what you're going through, God gets it, he knew. So I kind of, I didn't need to kind of, offload it on anybody else because god knew yeah and that was was that what strengthened you the thought that god was with you and knew what you were going through yeah i think going even going onto the wards that was it was quite scary because in the first wave you were locked in like small rooms so you had your ppe on and then you were sent into this room and there were there was a nurse for each patient but you were in that bubble then for the next 12 hours. Um, and it was, it was it was very kind of, it was isolating, but you, you had that one person that you were gifted to look after, knowing that you, you may never speak to them because they're fully sedated. You may never meet them again, but you're also aware that their family can't see them. And I think that was, that was where, you had to see it as a gift that you would you were given that task of looking after them because you were their only person you're their only friend at that time i love that you use that phrase you know the gift of looking after them and that you saw them it's so clear in what you just said that you saw them as a person not just a body on the bed and yeah it's your privilege almost to care for them yeah I think a, you, and you did find yourself talking to them even though you, you didn't know the person you, you could be having a full-on conversation knowing that they were probably never going to respond back. Yeah. So it, it did make a difference when you saw the people who you thought would not recover weeks later find out that they'd gone home or gone into um, like a care facility for intermediate care. It was it, absolutely not in anyone else's strength that they went to those, went to home. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Lou, thanks so much for sharing with us what's been a really hard season. Um, 
I'm really pleased that you're back on your normal ward at the minute and things are improving COVID wise. But um, yeah, thanks for sharing how even in that hard space, God was strengthening you and on your side. And thanks for all you've done for all those sick people. Um, is it okay if I pray for us before we finish? Yeah. Father, we thank you that your word is precious and does sustain and strengthen us in really hard circumstances that we wouldn't choose. Father, we thank you that you've sustained and strengthened Lou through this really hard season. And Father, we thank you that you promise to continue to do that. Father, we thank you for that promise that you will renew our strength. Father, please would you help us this week in whatever we face to be those who come to you and allow you to renew us and strengthen us for whatever this week holds. Father, we praise you for the way that you've done that for Lou through a really hard season, for the way that you've done that for her girls and for Graham. And Father, we, we just ask that you'd help us keep coming to you. Father, thank you that yeah, faith is that assurance of things that we hope for. And Father, we pray that you would be growing that faith in your goodness in each of our hearts this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, buddy. And thanks for listening, everybody. Good night and God bless. Amen.